Hi guys, if you've been following me at all recently, you may have realised that a big theme for me at the moment is finishing up things that I have done, finishing up creative projects. And the March monthly challenge on journal workshops is even finishing up your projects. And the response to that has been that a lot of us um, have half finished projects and we need a certain amount of help to get them done. Um, it's not that we don't know what it is we need to do. It's not that we, th they're even hard. Some of them aren't even that hard to get done, but for whatever reason, they're laying around rather than getting done and by laying around it doesn't even have to be that they're physically laying around it can be that they're all over your studio but it could also be that they're laying around in your head taking up far too much room than is necessary and stopping you from moving forward so what I have realized the past couple of weeks is that setting yourself up to finish your projects can actually often mean that you need to start something new So since I posted the monthly challenge for getting our projects finished, I've managed to do a couple of things, but not nearly as many things as I would have liked to have gotten done by now. Familiar scenario, yes, it is. Um, but what I'm going to talk about in this video is hopefully going to squash that scenario. It's certainly going to make, I'm already feeling a big shift for me. Um, and what's happened is I, I'll be honest, I even felt a little bit stuck. And it wasn't stuck in a sense that I didn't have the desire to do it because I did. Um, it wasn't because I didn't have um, the ideas or the inspiration because I did, but I just didn't have that extra push to get me motivated enough to get moving on these things. And when you don't have that, you can often then add extra pressure onto yourself because you're feeling guilt for not doing it. You can even feel shame for not having done something that is easy. You know how to do it. So why haven't you done it by now? kind of thing we can often let our inner critics then take the reins and take over so what I've actually done and it wasn't until last night that this shift happened for me is figure out that going about trying to get things done in the old way isn't working going about trying to get things done uh, get half finished things done get old things finished it doesn't work in the old way um, and this old way is just trying to push yourself, do it, motivation, motivation, just trying to force yourself to do it. It kind of just comes you up and gets you stuck. Now, if you're a member of the Creative Goal Journaling class, um, you know, I never at one point say that you aren't going to come up against roadblocks when you're doing something and getting stuck is a natural part of the process. What you need to do is not see it as a failure when you do get stuck. But figure out, like I did last night, is how to shift that energy completely so that you actually find what is going to work for you. And what is going to work, and it's just like a complete revelation for me, is starting something new to finish those old things. Now, although I'm talking about new projects, I'm not talking about new projects that are going to add extra pressure on. What I'm talking about is new projects that are going to be the support structure to you finishing your old projects. Um, and what I'm going to do is just talk about what I've come up with to do for myself as a demonstration for you to then figure out what might be your something new that is going to help you. And this is what a lot of the creative process is about. It's just figuring out what is going to work for you and not seeing your failures as failures. So the first thing I'm going to do is what I'm calling my shift project. It's a 90 day shift project where I'm going to focus. I'm going to take that time, that structure to focus on what it really is I want. Where do I want to be by the end of that point? And really focusing my energies through the next 90 days to make sure that that happens. Um, now, I've heard 90 days spoken of a few times before from a few different sources as being like a really nice, decent amount of time because you can see enough amount of change in that point. But it is like, you know, a year or things that feel too far off for you to grab. Um, so I'm going to do that because I've never actually done it within that time frame before and done it purposefully because doing something purposefully is what is really going to create a shift. So what I've done is. I've created a bunch of kind of journaling questions for me, journaling inquiries for me to start off my 90 days. Um, and I'll tell you briefly a couple what they are, just in case you feel like you want to do it. But you have to 
first of all, you have to really be committed to it and not just think of it as another, oh, I might try this kind of thing. That won't actually create a shift. A shift is only something that happens through purposeful action and determination and um, tenacity, really. OK, so what I'm first focusing on, um, journaling about first to get really clear, crystal, crystal, crystal clear on what it is you want to bring about in these 90 days. First of all, what I'm doing is I'm going to write out what it is I want to do in this time. Very simple, but you need to be crystal clear on it, because if you're not, you're not going to get to what you actually want. So I'm um, writing out what I want in this time, not just what projects I want done, how I want to feel, where I want to be at the end of it, any big shifts I want to have had happened in that time. Um, and then also focusing on the why. So the what and the why. And if you're in the Creative Goal Journaling class, on journal workshops, you know, we already talk about the why. It's the underneath real reason. It's your propeller almost. OK, so you can imagine yourself as something, a submarine or something in the water and you need a boat or whatever. You need a propeller, really. And that is what um, your why is going to be on those times when you might get stuck is to find that underneath the de depths, the layers as to why you want something. So the surface, you might want to get this project done. But why do you want this project done? That's just a surface thing to say you want this old thing out of your head. Um, you need a, a reason why behind it. Um, and then also the how. <laughs> I know it sounds very simple, but what support do you need? Uh, to bring it about, which leads me on to, so the what, the why and the how. They, I'm not going to go into all of the journal and things that I've set out. I'm just going to give you those three to kind of move forward on if you want to do a 90 day project. So the support aspect of my shift project also brings up something for me, which I'm going to be doing alongside my shift project, which is hiring a coach, which is quite a bit of money, which my inner critic could easily tell me not to do that I can't afford it, that I'm already doing other coaching things this year. Um, not in the same area, obviously, because it's a different aspect of support. Um, but my inner critic could easily say you're spending enough money already or it isn't worth it. Or even my inner critic could come up telling me that that so that I don't get the shift, so that I don't get the change that I want um, that could happen out of the coaching. So that is also something new, a new fresh pair of eyes. If you don't want to think about it as hiring a coach, um, you could also just get a fresh pair of eyes on your projects or get your own eyes fresher by going out somewhere new, by doing something, by also something I want to do this year is have a solo retreat, go somewhere um, where I maybe have friends so that I could maybe visit them, you know, if I go for a week or two, maybe visit them one or two nights or whatever, but really have that solo retreat time to really work on something that I want to work on um, and connect with myself and what my why is and whatever everything else is that I want to be able to um, propel my life, not just my projects, but my life in a way forward that I want it to go into. Again, it needs to be done with application with intention um otherwise it's the famous the famous cheshire quack <laughs> cheshire cat quote from alice in wonderland <laughs> quat cheshire, cheshire quat cheshire cat quote from alice in wonderland where she asks which way to go and he says where do you want to end up and she says i don't know and he says it doesn't matter which way you go then something like that not not my um particular quote but it's 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 of that origin and um it's true if you don't know where you're going if you don't make it intentional you aren't going to know. So that's what my shift project is really about at the minute is to hone in that time. And what I've done to kind of get these projects, these half finished projects moving is I have created a 90 day to do list in that time. Now, I'm not meaning a to do list of things to do every single day, but in that to do list is all the things that are half finished that I want done, that I want out of the quagmire. 
that I just want to have released, feel cleansed, feel clean. Um, not that these projects are making me feel dirty, but they're making um, they're making me creatively feel cluttered. Let's put it that way. I'm not clean, clear slate to get on with something else. So starting something new can help you finish your old projects up. If you, like me, feel like you're getting nowhere, if you feel like you're getting stuck, um, and you'll have to figure out for yourself what is going to be of the best support to you. And when you figure that out, I would say don't allow your inner critic to tell you that you shouldn't do it. So like me with the coaching, my bank account's going to suffer. Oh, well, it's something I need right now. So if you have a program and it, support can also mean material things, tools, it can also just mean time, it can mean anything, um, but your inner critic can come up and tell you, disguise it as something, i.e. you haven't got enough money or you shouldn't spend this money. Um, and what it's really trying to stop is your growth or is your learning or something else, uh, but it's hiding and a point I also want to make here is not to just because you've got 50,000 half finished projects think you've got to finish all of them. Uh, we can sometimes do that, but because we don't want to let go when we put in so much effort into something, whether it's a half finished blanket or a half finished novel, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, when we put something into it and it can just be energy from our minds, you know, our ideas, and we've spent a lot of time kind of just marinating in the project, it can be really difficult to relinquish it. But if you aren't going to finish it, you need to be truthful with yourself and let it go. Now, what I've got here is a bunch. I mean, you can see there's a bunch, there's 20 in here of these cards off of my big project board. Um, and I don't create a card for a project unless I'm certain I'm going to do it. But when you come to do something, it can often mean that you need to drop it for whatever reason. You have changed, your direction's changed. Um, you don't want to do it anymore. If there's no joy in a project, drop it. Now, it doesn't mean to say that these 20 projects won't turn up as something else. They might do, but they're not right for me, not right now. I don't want to do them, say goodbye to them and be honest with yourself about that. Don't clutch on to stuff, it's clutter and we want to clean out that clutter. So this has been a big revelation to me and I wanted to share it with you that doing something new can help you finish up the old stuff. And once upon a time I'd have thought that statement meant um, picking up a new hobby or a new project to do that's completely different to what you normally do, um, say like music or writing or photography or something other than art that we do as mixed media artists and that sometimes can because it can give you a break to then come back to your project but what I'm talking about here is projects that are gonna support you literally help you um, almost take you by the hand because they are focusing more on your half finished projects and how you can get those done and this kind of video is the sort of video which I nearly did think just to put in the creative goal journaling class um, because it's the kind of stuff really that ends up in there because I thought it might just be applicable to those people that are really um, trying to get some change happening or get a goal happening, which is what the creative goal journaling class is all about. But through the monthly challenge of finish your projects, I realised how many people there are with half finished projects um, that maybe need some assistance to getting out of that stuck place where you feel like you're stuck in the mud. Um, and if you want to, your something new could be the monthly challenge. So I shall stick a link to the monthly challenge below, along with other things I've been talking about, like the creative goal journaling class. Um, and they can be your something new um, or anything else could be your something new that you think is going to help you. The monthly challenge doesn't matter how long is left of March, you can go on there and post your pictures, post of your half finished projects or just write what your intentions are for what you are going to finish creating. Um, it doesn't matter how long's left of March, it doesn't matter if you come to it in a different month, month besides March, you just need to make the intention 
to get your project done. Um, and that might be you just being sh seen by other people, you just showing up might be what you need to help get your projects done. You might need something more intensive, which is why you might want the Creative Gold journaling class. Where I've put my 90 day shift project and my to-do list there is in the um, Leonie Dawson workbooks. Because there's a big, and some of you have these already, um, but not everything in the workbooks is applicable to me. And there are some things besides which I want to explore. So don't feel like you only have to explore in these workbooks what is in these workbooks. There's about a third at the back or at least a quarter um, space for you to develop your own things that are going to help you. And these are more um, goal, goal achieving books. Um, and I use these little tabs that are from my collage sheets to easily get to those places. <laughs> Uh, because when you then have a lot of different things, different tactics, different processes, um, something like this that you hear me talking about, like a shift project, or you hear somebody else talking about, that's going to help you. You can, you don't need even a workbook. You can just have a journal to help you through that um, and keep that information um, to that is going to actually give you a bit of a kick up the bum, a bit of motivation, which is what we sometimes need. In the Creative Gold Journaling class, I talk about the difference between motivation and inspiration. And inspiration is that thing that bubbles up inside of you. Um, so you can see other people's artwork and be inspired by their artwork for sure. And yes, that is an external thing. But you get that reaction inside of you that bubbles up, that wants to come out. Whereas motivation is literally, to me, it's more of a negative impact. It's a kick up the bum. It's because if you don't, this consequence will happen. Um, which is why, you know, so many people are going to jobs that they hate and stuff because there's a consequence to not doing it. You'll get sacked um, and things like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean, though, that because it's a motivator, something like um, the workbooks or a coach or something um, that's external is a motivator. It doesn't mean that it shouldn't be used. So, yes, it's more of a negative connotation. I might be doing certain things because my coach has now said, right, by this time you need to have this done. But it's getting me moving, whereas I've been stuck. So it's an external motivator that might have might be because of negative connotations, but it's going to get a positive result. Does that make sense? So use all of these things. Figure out what inspires you. I've been trying to go on inspiration recently. It's got me stuck because I don't have enough momentum within me. I need a push. Something else I wanted to talk about, which is I'll make it quick, but it's a very, very decent way to look at creative projects is like a you. So at the beginning of a project, like the letter U, the beginning of a project, you're at the top, you're yippee yippee yay. <laughs> you want to get on with this project. You've got so much energy. You really want to get this done. So you literally you don't need to go with the project. It kind of the momentum takes you itself and it takes you down here. And when you get down here, you get stuck because kind of think of it like water in a U-bend or something, you know, the flow. Um, you can get to here just with the, the momentum itself. But then when you're here, you need a push. You need some force to get it up to the top again. And I, I read somewhere, I can't remember where, but that really, really cool um, idea of hope that looks like a you, um, of your creative project being like a you. You start here, you're full of it, you get to here and you need that push to get you out of it. You need some force. So inspiration is this half. And this is me adding my own little bit onto this um, concept is inspiration to this point, motivation to that point. And when you get here, this is where the blocks can often happen. So if you think of it like a U-Ben pipe, like it's contained here if that gets blocked which is what's been happening to me recently you need an extra push you need an extra force to break through that to get up the top of the u so it's kind of like you're doubling up when you get um blocks or inner critics or things happening to you because you haven't done your projects and you're getting this look it can even be outer critics when are you going to move that, love? It's still around here, you know? <laughs> I know some of you have hobbies that are just like, why is there projects everywhere? Um, so you can have inner or outer critics trying to get you to 
in their own way move on with your projects but they're just making you feel more stuck and they're just creating more blocks that you need to break down so you need this double push you need this extra force and that is probably going to need to look like something new you're going to have to introduce something new whether it's something physical like a coach like a project like a workbook like a journal like a class right, something like that or it can be a mental mindset shift where you say right and that's what this project is it's although it's a project it's also a mindset to make myself committed and to stick to this 90 day structure that is going to allow me to get everything done I want to get done and to feel good about myself by the end of it and even a little bit excited to now go off and do these journaling questions and to really get movement happening because you've got to feel it first before you can create that movement you need to feel that energy you need to have it within you you can't no one can drink from an empty well. You need to have something in your tanks to be able to then um, create whatever it is you want to create. So this video is a little longer than I was expecting, but there's quite a few concepts I wasn't intending to share that I did share. So I hope it's been of use to you. Much love, everybody. Bye.